Hello, everyone. Good morning slash afternoon. Um, bringing a message today, bringing you a dream that I feel uh, that it's time to share. Uh, hope everyone's well. I hope everyone um, is, is coming back strong out of a, a kind of long weekend. Um, I just, you know, I, I'm a little always hesitant to get online and just share my heart or what the Lord's doing, but um, I'm just going to have uh, faith today that what the Lord's been stirring in me for about uh, five or six days in regards to two dreams and particularly, um, he's, he's going to honor it and um, that I'm just being obedient to his call. And I want to, first of all, you know, give kind of a snippet on those people who are going to be watching that maybe really aren't sure uh, about dreams, about visions. Maybe they don't know what their calling is. They're having all these dreams and visions, but they have no idea what to do with them. And that's been on my heart for a few years now. And some of my background is when the Lord started calling me into the prophetic, into rather his word deeper about four years ago, four years ago this month, actually in 2020, the Lord began to speak to me in ways that I had never heard him speak or move. And I don't mean it in an audible manner, not that he can't speak audibly, but he began to speak to my spirit and lead me and guide me and, and show me things and dreams and visions. And I had nobody I had nobody that I thought would understand, and so I sort of kept it on, on lockdown, except for maybe my household family members. You know, I would share a little bit here and there with my husband or my kids, and, you know, just I, I was just trying to sort things out because it was new. Um, I've been a dreamer my whole life. My whole life, I can, you know, I'm 41 right now, and I there are times I recall dreams from three decades ago. I will have brief uh, snippets of those dreams. And it's the most odd thing because I know what age I was just about, man, I had that dream when I was like 12. Guys, I don't have a great, fantastic memory. Ask anybody that knows me. Uh, I struggle with na people's names. I remember their faces, but I struggle with names. Um, I struggle even with like memories of my kids. Sometimes I'll look back at photos and be like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. I mean, I do not have a great memory. And so the, the gift that the Lord has given me has been always in the dream lane. That's my lane. But about four years ago, he sort of combined that with dreams and words, lengthy words about our nation and about the Big C Church. And I didn't know what to do with them. Um, I had nobody in my family that's highly prophetic. I don't come from a long line of pastors. I don't come from even people that are quote unquote churched. I mean, we went to church in my adulthood, but I really didn't know that there was more. I didn't know that there was a relationship with Jesus. I always believed in God. That was a about as superficial as it was. I was still living like the world. Um, I just don't even now have anyone that I can lean on prophetically to like a mentor. And I felt led to share this with you that I prayed a long time for a mentor when all this began happening a couple years. And just like, okay, Lord, I would love to bounce this off somebody. Am I doing it right? What am I doing wrong? And I felt like I was doing wrong all the time. And I'm sharing this with you because there are those of you out there, because it is scriptural, um, in the last days, you know, he's going to pour out dreams and visions and people will prophesy. And that is the now, that is sort of one uh, vein of commission he's given to me is to help people who don't know what to do with these things. They think that they're crazy or they, they are afraid to share. And rightfully so, uh, because the church and society will tear you down in a hot second they, and then you'll just be quiet. And 
part of the vein of my ministry is to just encourage those where you're, where the Lord begins to woo you and he begins to draw you in and draw you closer. And you're not sure what to do with this because you're fearful that maybe you're hearing wrong or seeing wrong, or you don't know anything about the prophetic. Maybe you don't know anything about church. I don't know, but I want to encourage you that neither did I really. And the beautiful part was he never sent a mentor my way, uh, but rather I learned from Holy Spirit himself, all of it. I would watch people on YouTube and I'd be like, yeah, you know, I've gotten words similar to that, or I totally see what they're saying. I could relate with them in such a way, uh, but for myself and for the calling that the Lord had for me, I wasn't sure. And I kept quiet and I'm getting all these downloads um, about the nation and about um, corruption and different large institutions and um, President Trump and President Biden and um, Congress and the Supreme Court. And I'm like, I don't even know who these people are necessarily. Or, you know, many of them, I had heard their name, but I didn't know how they would relate in the news. I didn't know their history. I didn't know what they were going through at the time. But I have them all. I have a couple books worth of uh, written prophetic words for the nation, and I'm going to begin to re-release those as the Lord wills me to do. And I'm, um, I don't know if they're in order that I receive them. I'm assuming they are. And these two particular dreams that I'm going to share today and tomorrow, uh, there's one about President Biden, one about President Trump, about two or three years apart that I received them, but the Lord's been giving me uh, some interpretation the last five days. And so I cannot sit on them any longer. I'm, you know, you'll end up being disobedient if the Lord tells you to do something and tells you to share something and you just hold on to it. Um, it's not my word. It's not my dream. Um, it, it, you know, it is a prophetic um, word to encourage, exhort, and edify the body. And knowing when to be in season and out of season, knowing the signs of the times, knowing where we're at and being able to pray along with the heart of the father. And that's what prophetic words and prophetic dreams are for is so that we can begin to partner with Jesus and what he's doing in the earth and what his heart truly is. So, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing me to say that because a lot of times I want to try to justify and I just, he's telling me I can't, don't do that. Don't try to justify yourself. I am your vindicator. I am your protector. And so I'm to give you um, these dreams, one with uh, interpretation and, and one not really. It's just, I'm going to give it to you as it is. I'm going to give you the President Biden dream first. And then I'm going to end this video and I'll share the second one of President Trump um, for simplicity um, so that I can find them easier or other people could find them easier. So the first dream I'm going to share is from December 27th, 2021. Um, let me show you. I don't think it's backwards, but... Um, and, you know, not that, again, I have anything to prove or to hide to anyone, but I like to show my notes sometimes um, so that y'all can see. But, all right, let's get into it. Jesus, help me. So in this particular dream, um, I was in a full auditorium. Every seat is filled. It is set up like a stadium. The seating is each row higher than the one before, and I'm about 20 or 30 rows back, but I can see the podium very easily. I have a direct line of sight. Joe Biden is at the podium taking questions from what seems to be students. So I'm not sure if they were like junior high, high school, college. I'm assuming it was probably a higher learning facility simply because it was like auditorium style, you know, stadium type seating. But nonetheless, uh, I have written here that they were students. 
As he's talking, he begins to spit with each sentence. And not just a little drop, like when we speak and accidentally like spit a little bit. This was like, this was like if you eat sour candy and your salivary glands activate and your whole mouth fills with saliva, he began to pour out spit. So I take out my phone and begin to record. So as his mouth filled with saliva, all of it came pouring out as he spoke, gobs. Someone would ask him a question and he would start to answer and gobs of spit would pour out. He asked for someone to grab him a water. He looks to his right and along the side is all of his quote unquote people. Um, Secret Service, I believe the vice president, his wife, others important to him, ones that would follow him. He's still spitting and still pouring out saliva. No one brings him water. More spit, more questions, more spit, more questions. It just keeps going. All of this, it's just flowing like a waterfall. Suddenly he's in the crowd of people. So the scene shifts, he's no longer at the podium. He's in the crowd of people and he begins to slowly shake, appearing to be in distress. The shaking turns to a seizure and I'm still recording, concerned for his well-being. As the seizure continues, bodies of people begin to surround him and enclose him to where I'm no longer able to see or record. They are attending to him. The scene shifts. We're now in the parking lot. This part's kind of funny to me because I, I have no compass for what it means, but I'm hoisting a giant inflatable full pool toy into the bed of my truck. I'm thinking I'll wait to see if he comes out and if I can talk to him. And, and the pool toy was like overflowing the back of the truck. I knew I would have to strap it down or it would fall out. All of a sudden, I see him walking across the lot. Now in my dream, the setting was actually my church parking lot. It was dark outside. It, it was definitely nighttime. And I see him walking with one man only. In the building, he had a lot of staff with him along the side. He had a lot of staff. But when he asked for water, he looked in their direction and no one brought him water. Well, none of them were with him when he left. He exited the building and he had no one except for this one person. There was no secret service, no military, no family, no staff just one man only. And that was the end of the dream. Now, whether or not this is a metaphor or literal, I do not know. He did not give me full interpretation of this dream except for one part when I asked about the spitting. What does it mean? loss of bodily function. There was nothing in his power he could do to stop it. The loss of bodily function was the precursor to a larger problem. I did write down, you know, spit can, can mean like humiliation, shame, dishonor, or rejection. And, you know, with anyone in a position like his, of course, he is receiving a, a lot of that backlash. Now, I'm not in full agreement with hardly anything that's going on right now. But what I do know is, is that Jesus died on the cross for every single person. And despite the actions of some people, the goal of the church is to always pray for salvation and repentance. My goal, is, or not my goal, but my, my prayer is that he will repent and turn. Because I do feel as though he is being used in a lot of ways, and it's very sad to watch. It 
it's very sad to watch thinking if that were one of my family members being treated like that near the end of his life. Um, and then to think that all those same people that are using him would abandon him. And the person that walked him out was not the same person that was with him in the building. And so that saddened me a lot. I just felt massive abandonment on his part. And so um, I would like you to pray for his salvation, uh, his repentance, turning from any sin that he has and receiving uh, Jesus Christ as Lord. Um, so that's all that I have for that one. And uh, if anyone has um, anything to say or to comment, uh, please feel free to do that nicely. Um, you know, anyone that's watching this and that knows about dreams, I, I would imagine is a Christian. This is primarily a Christian channel and we need to treat each other with kindness and have humility. And just because you may never meet me, uh, does not mean it does not it, it's not a the go ahead to speak to people however we want to speak. And I have been guilty of this as well. But in a time where we're at in our nation, I beg people to speak as Jesus would speak. If we pro proclaim to be Christians, um, there is a way to have a seasoned tongue, to have words that come out that edify and, and there's time of correction and, and discipline. I fully understand that. Uh, but I do believe we have gotten very far away because of technology. Um, it seems to be this disconnect of humanity between us and, and other people. So that's just me on my soapbox for a minute. So I hope um, that we can pray about this. Um, I want him in our prayers uh, of course, we want um, salvation above all, that the heavens re rejoice for the one uh, that returned to Jesus. So y'all take care, and I will do the second Trump dream, um, and we'll upload it today or tomorrow. All right, take care, and God bless.